with over 11,300 locations globally, 140 million shoppers. Walmart has the highest number of employees in the world. Their annual sales exceed $500 billion, and every landlord wants Walmart to be their tenant. But there was a time when a landlord pushed Walmart out of his property. In today's episode, we will discuss the founder of Walmart. The world is just coming out of the war. The country is going into the Great Depression. Coming times would be tough on everyone, especially farmers. On top of depression, they had another thing coming for them. In the 1930s, U.S. was hit by the Dust Bowl. The high winds and dust swept the region, affecting crops and livestock. Farmers couldn't grow. Sam's father's work was to make sure that the farmers paid for their land. His job became even harder. He had to repossess failed farms. Many of them were passed down to their children. Young Sam went with his father and saw him talk to farmers. Maybe this affected young Sam, as he did not want his family to go through what the farmers were going through. Sam's care for others was seen in him from his high school day. He joined the Boy Scouts, where he saved a boy from drowning. He then went on to the university and graduated with a degree in economics. After graduation, he worked at J.C. Penney for $75 per month. As the story goes, he was good with customers, but his books were never organized. His bosses told him that he was not cut out for retail. By 1942, U.S. had joined the war. Sam wanted to do something for his country and decided to join the army. One night as he was bowling, he met a woman who also became his wife, Helen. Sam proposed to Helen. Right after they got married, he was called for duty. Sam and Helen welcomed their first child on October 28, 1944, less than a year after the war ended. Sam returned home and decided to run his own store. With savings of $5,000 and a loan of $20,000 from his father-in-law, he bought Ben Franklin Shop. The owner was trying to get rid of, as it was losing money. Sam knew that the store was losing money because of the prices. If he could find a way to sell items on an affordable price, the store would pick up. There was only one problem. Sam did not know what was the common shopping item. As he was on a budget, he wanted to make sure that his first item was something that people actually wanted. One day, Sam saw the store across from his selling ladies' clothes. The store ran out within a day. Sam saw this as an opportunity to welcome shoppers in his shop. He drove to the suppliers and bought everything they had in stock. The stores across from Sam couldn't order any more as the supplier was out. The customers started to walk towards Sam's store. From there, he made sure that he was one step ahead of his competitors. He would place popcorn machine outside the store. People passing by would smell the popcorn and buy from it. It took Sam three years to pay back the loan to his father-in-law. However, with profits came jealousy. The owner of Sam's building had an eye on him and he got greedy. When the time came to renew the lease, the owner refused, forcing Sam to leave. Sam knew that he was meant to be a retailer and with a vision to provide shopping item on an affordable price, he searched for a new location and found one in Bentonville. Moving to Bentonville with a family of four kids was not easy, but the price was too good. Learning from the past, Sam signed off on the new lease for 99 years. On July 1950, he opened doors. Sam soon realized that instead of a clerk handing an item over to customers, customers bought an item quicker if they were given a choice to select one. This way, Sam would make a sale much quicker, and because they were selecting one by themselves, he didn't need clerks. The expenses dropped. Using self-service model, sales tripled, giving him enough money to expand. Over the next 10 years, he bought 16 stores, managing them by himself. As he drove back and forth from one location to the other, he realized that he was spending more time driving than spending time inside the store. So, he bought a plane, giving him the freedom to visit store quite often. Sam was operating under a franchise, Ben Franklin. He suggested Ben Franklin if they were to buy items in volume, it would be cheaper, which would eventually reduce consumer price. But Ben Franklin didn't think much of Sam's idea and rejected it. Sam, frustrated, decided to set up a chain of his own. On July 1962, he opened a store in Rogers, Arkansas. The inspector walked in the store to review it and told Sam, This store is one of the ugliest looking stores. This was the first Walmart store. Sam Regardless opened the store to the public. To his surprise, the store exceeded his own expectations. 
bringing in sales of $1 million in first year. In 1964, he opened two more stores. His strategy was simple to have lower prices than that of his competitors. He would walk in a competitor's stores and if he saw a price tag that was lower to his, he would call the Walmart location and tell them to drop their price right away. His wife Helen suggested that he should make profits available to all employees, and in 1972, Walmart opened its profit-sharing program. By 1978, Walmart had 195 stores in 10 states and was opening 100 stores in a year. By 1985, Sam Walton was the richest man in the United States. But then in 1987, with the stock market crashed, Sam lost over a billion dollars in a matter of hours. His reply? It's paper anyway. On April 5, 1992, Sam passed away after his 74th birthday. Sam was up before dawn. He would come home only to have dinner and to catch up on his reading. He once said that, I never really understand how he succeeded. He did not know retail business, but decided to read a book from Ben and Franklin applying book principle in his personal life. Until next time, have a good one.